Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a slasher thriller film, Terrifier, Part 1. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with a television hostess interviewing a woman who is the sole survivor of a massacre, which left the interviewee brutally mutilated and placed in a coma. The hostess mentions the attacker, identifying him as the clown. The interviewee claims that she saw how the clown died. However, it is recently reported that the clown's body disappeared from the county coroner's office. A person, revealed to be the clown, watches this from his television, and he is frustrated. He destroys the television, beating it to pieces. Later on, he dresses in creepy clown makeup and assembles a bag of crude weapons to begin a night of Halloween nightmares. After the interview, the hostess is backstage on the phone with her significant other, speaking derogatorily about the interviewee. She claims that interviewing a massacre survivor will make her skyrocket to fame. The hostess ends the phone call with her husband as she receives another call. However, the person on the other line is inaudible. Just then, she notices something from afar. She checks the clothes rack as she sees it rustling, after which the interviewee suddenly appears and attacks her. The interviewee gouges the hostess' eyes with her bare hands, leaving her to die in her blood. As the hostess staggers to breathe, the interviewee laughs hastily. The scene then transitions to the past, showing two young women, Sarah and Dawn, finishing the partying and walking down the sidewalk to the car. Both drunk heavily, they opt to get food to help them achieve sobriety before driving back home. As they discuss their plan, they spot the clown with his big black trash bag of weapons. Dawn makes fun of him by flirting against Sarah's protest. As they argue, the clown suddenly vanishes, which creeps Sarah out. They dismiss it and enter a pizza restaurant where Sarah's phone dies. While waiting for their order, the clown enters the pizzeria, sits across the table from them, and starts making faces at Sarah. This spoots her big time, but Dawn doesn't care and even forces the clown to take a selfie with her. Seconds later, the owner asks the clown for his order, but he remains silent and stares amain at Sarah. The owner returns to the kitchen, pissed off, while the clown buys a toy ring for Sarah from a vending machine. He puts it on her finger and goes to the restroom to do his smelly business, before the owner brings them their order. Shortly after, the owner angrily expels the clown for heat smearing his feces and urine. After a while, Sarah and Dawn return to the car, only to find one of the tires slashed. Left with no choice, Sarah calls her sister, who agrees to pick them up. Meanwhile, the pizzeria employee rants about cleaning the bathroom to the owner, only to find the owner's severed head on the counter. His eyes and nose have been replaced with lit candle stubs. While Sarah suggests that the clown may have slashed the car tire, the pizzeria employee runs for his life. However, doom has fallen before him as he discovers he's locked out. He reaches for the phone when the clown chops his hand in half using a meat clever before stabbing him in the cheek. The clown then proceeds to repeatedly stab him in the face before leaving his mutilated corpse. On the contrary, Sarah and Dawn argue whether the clown is dangerous because of his odd behavior. Sarah changes the topic and shares she needs to pee. Fortunately, an exterminator working nearby, named Mike, comes out to smoke, so Sarah pleads with him to let her use the building's bathroom. Mike reluctantly agrees, since she's too smelly, possibly because she's shitted out a little bit. He guides Sarah to the restroom. Although disgusted by the rat-infested building, Sarah only focuses on her business. While waiting, Dawn hears over the radio that the two men working at the pizzeria were brutally murdered, and the police are looking for a man who fits the description of the clown. As she realizes this, someone enters the car, whom she thinks is Sarah. However, as she looks beside her, Dawn screams in fear as she sees the clown smiling, with blood splattering across his ugly face. On the other hand, Mike has his earphones in, as he starts decontaminating the building. Simultaneously, Sarah attempts to leave the premises. She then wanders into the basement and encounters a woman with a baby. The woman introduces Sarah to her daughter, which is revealed to be a plastic doll. She says that Sarah is their new tenant. Sarah immediately realizes that the woman is unhinged, so she makes an excuse and leaves the woman's company. Sarah soon finds her way back to the front door when she suddenly freezes and sees the clown waiting for her. She promptly flees as the clown pursues her, tracing her smell. She hides among the parking lot's cars. However, the clown still finds her and repeatedly stabs her in the leg as she tries to escape. Sarah strikes him in the face to escape, but he catches her, begins strangling her, and tries to gouge her eyes out. Sarah fights back by grabbing the scalpel that he dropped and stabs him with it before escaping. She holds a slab of metal to defend herself while the clown searches for her. Fear strikes her when the clown stops across from her, so she throws a tiny piece of metal away from their direction, distracting the clown from finding her. Concurrently, while picking up Sarah and Dawn, Sarah's sister hears the news about the clown on the radio. 
Limping, Sarah looks for another exit by climbing upstairs, where she finds a disconnected phone. She spots Mike from a distance and repeatedly yells at him to get his attention. However, Mike cannot hear her from the music. When he turns around, it's too late as the clown grabs Sarah, covers her mouth, and sedates her with a drug-filled syringe. Following that, Sarah wakes up in the basement, tied to a chair, and restrained from moving her mouth and legs with duct tape. She finds the clown on her side, holding his torture weapons before settling with a hacksaw. He pulls Sarah by the hair and threatens her with it before pulling back a curtain, revealing a suspended upside-down Dawn from the ceiling. The clown rips off the remaining cloth from Dawn and saws her from there down to her head as he hears Sarah's muffled screams in protest. As he finishes mutilating another body, Sarah manages to break free and stabs him in the back, allowing her to escape. She hides and grabs a wooden post while the clown stalks the grounds, searching for her. She sneaks up behind him and beats him with the wooden post until he falls onto the floor. The adrenaline of beating up this weird serial killer strikes, so she taunts him to get up and fight her back. The clown slowly gets on his knees while Sarah teases him. Suddenly, he pulls out his gun and shoots Sarah in the leg. The clown smirks manically after seeing her fall in pain. As this happens, the crazy woman from earlier whispers to her daughter that she will ensure to keep her safe as she hears Sarah's screams of pain. Sarah attempts to crawl away, but the clown shoots her on her side, the smirk gone on his face. Fear is evident in her eyes as she stares into the dead eyes of her attacker, who pulls the trigger on her for the third time. After that, he leaves to get more bullets, and at this time, the sister arrives and calls Dawn's phone to tell them she's there. The clown sees this and waits for the ring to end, before opening the phone and impersonating Dawn via text, telling Sarah's sister to come around the back. The clown then proceeds to Dawn's mutilated body and takes a selfie, imitating what she did to him earlier at the pizzeria. After that, he returns to Sarah and shoots her in the face several times. He then notices the crazy woman from afar and smiles creepily while waving at her. Although creeped out by the building, the sister complies with the text and goes around the back in search of Sarah and Dawn. Meanwhile, the crazy woman flees the scene and finds Mike to warn him about the clown. She tells him about Sarah's body in the basement, but Mike doesn't believe her crazy and leaves. The crazy woman tries to warn Mike still, when she realizes that she left her daughter downstairs, so she runs off in search of her. Meanwhile, Mike calls his friend to come after his encounter with the crazy woman. However, the clown sneaks up behind him. He taps on his shoulders, and when Mike turns around, the clown hits his head with a hammer. As Mike falls, the clown smashes the foam into pieces. Shortly after, while the sister looks for Dawn and Sarah, the crazy woman finds the clown rocking her daughter. The crazy woman bravely faces him and reasons with the clown for her daughter's sake. She makes him believe that all he needs is motherly care, before embracing him in a motherly hug. The clown submits into her warm arms, rocking himself like a giant child, sucking his thumb and rocking himself. Meanwhile, Mike's friend arrives after receiving the call. He tries to enter the building, but is locked out, so he leads Mike a voicemail, telling him to open up as all the doors are locked. Concurrently, the sister calls Dawn after failing to find them. She then hears Dawn's phone ringing from a distance. She follows the noise, leading to a basement room, where she finds Dawn's mutilated body with her intestines on the ground. The sister immediately flees the room, shocked and disgusted by what happened. As she leaves the basement, she hears a woman screaming, so she has no choice but to return downstairs to search for Sarah. However, she finds the crazy woman on the floor, naked. The sister thinks the woman on the floor is Sarah. She notices someone beside her. It's the crazy woman who has been scalped and have her chest flayed. The woman on the floor is revealed to be the clown, wearing the crazy woman's scalp and chest skin. He springs to life and pursues the sister, who desperately attempts to escape. The clown grabs her by her hormone outfit, which she removes quickly before fleeing. In a panic, she covers her body smell and hides in a metal wardrobe. She watches the clown through a hole as he pretends to be a woman. He soon stops as he spots the sister in the wardrobe with his GPS nose. He attempts to open, but it doesn't budge. They then hear a car honking, so the clown leaves her alone to deal with Mike's friend, who finally enters the building after finding a key underneath the welcome mat. He begins looking for Mike when he accidentally steps onto the crazy woman's plastic doll, which she claims to be her daughter. As he looks at it, the clown appears behind him and stabs him in the head. With the knife still on his head, the clown decapitates him with the bolo in his other hand. Meanwhile, the sister leaves the wardrobe and looks for another exit. There, she sees the clown riding a toy bicycle. She secretly makes her escape, but the clown suddenly appears behind her and wraps a plastic across her face, suffocating her. She tries to fight back, but the clown tightens the wrap, 
so she takes advantage of her long pointy tongue, not to tell massage the clown, but to pierce open the plastic. The clown seems confused about how she escaped when the sister grabs a long male to stab him in the foot before running away with her long tongue. Concurrently, Mike reawakens, weakened by the hit on his head. He hears the sister's screams as she finds Sarah's corpse with a sign that reads, Circus. She approaches her dead sister, refusing to believe that she died brutally. The clown comes from behind and strikes her with a crude whip. The sister yells painfully, with every hit of the whip landing on her sexy body. Unexpectedly, Mike appears behind the clown and surprises him with a hit on the head, knocking him unconscious. Although both are weakened, Mike helps Sarah's sister to stand and takes her into what seems to be a facility room. Mike contacts the police and informs them of the situation before trying to escape with her, despite the operator's instructions for them to wait for the police and ambulance. They exit the room and try to open the back door. As Mike looks for something to break the lock, the clown appears behind him and beats him up with a gasoline tank. After that, the clown crushes Mike's head with his foot before approaching the sister, who manages to break the lock with the bat that she finds on the corner. However, the clown strangles her from behind, but she frees herself by stabbing him in the eye. She escapes and hides in a nearby shed, where the clown traces her smell with his GPS nose and attempts to recapture her. Shortly after, the sister hears the police sirens wailing from a distance, so she approaches the doors, only to see the clown in a car. She tries to run away as the clown crashes the vehicle into the shed, but fails. The clown exits the car and approaches her severely wounded and unconscious body. Not long after that, the police arrive and catch the clown eating the sister's face. They instruct the clown to put his hands up and turn around, but the clown only puts his left hand up. When he finally turns around, the clown shoots himself in the head. The police then discover that the sister is still alive. Following that, all the corpses are brought into the coroner's office, including the clowns. The coroner opens the first body bag, revealing Mike's crashed head. Shocked by the severity of the body, the coroner unzips the clown's body bag when the lights suddenly flicker madly. The coroner waits for them to stop and returns to the clown, only to find himself choked by a now-resurrected clown. He chokes the coroner's neck with one hand while staring into his eyes. The film ends a year after that tragic event, revealing that Sarah's sister is the exact interviewee at the beginning of the movie, interviewed on live television. This implies that the sister is traumatized by the clown and has merged with his personality. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.